Hi, this is Jonathan Rose, Content Director at 1851 Franchise, and I'm here with Jamie Stigliano. She is the founder and CEO of Diva Dance. Jamie, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks so much. And uh, we have, um, we're recognizing you for the Top Women in Franchising program for 2024, so uh, congratulations on that honor. Thank you. It's so exciting. Where's my crown? I need a little... Those are coming. Those are coming. We'll get your ma mailing address from you a little Perfect. bit later in the show. Okay. Um, so let's just start things off. Can you tell the audience today a little bit about your journey to becoming a woman uh, leader in franchising? Sure. Well, I'm, I'm proud to represent Diva Dance. We are dance choreography classes for adults, and we're a very unique concept. We, uh, you know, we are dance choreography, which means we're not follow the leader style. We are truly, you're learning dance routines in our classes, uh, and our mission is to change lives because dance can do that. It's very transformative, and uh, we do that by inspiring confidence, building community, and that happens to be through hair tossing, booty popping dance classes for adults. So um, my journey to this actually started when I was a small child, creating my own dance routines in my bedroom uh, to Paula Abdul and Madonna and, you know, all the great you know music we listened to back in back in the 80s, if you will, and uh, in early 90s and creating my own dance routines. My mom enrolled me in a dance class, uh, thinking that that was the way to kind of channel that excitement that I had for for creating movement on my own. And I immediately withdrew. I, I'm a tap, tap dance class dropout um, because I wanted to create my own choreography and I wanted it to be to pop music. You know, I didn't want to dance to classical music and I didn't want to learn anybody else's choreography. So um, over the years, you know, I was never like a classically trained dancer. I, um, you know, like I said, I, I was really all about creating my own choreography. And I, I, my really first foray into that was in my high school dance team. Um, so I'm not one of those girls that like, you know, grew up with competitive cheer, or competitive dance. It was really, you know, kind of more recreational and fun through through my high school program. But after that, I went into the music industry. You know, I never intended to be a professional dancer. I never wanted to be Beyonce's backup dancer. I never wanted to be on Broadway. I had, you know, I kind of refer to it now as like I had a real job you know, in the, in the music business where I was an executive within the Sony music system for many years. Um, and so how I got into franchising was I was tired of making rappers and pop stars rich and famous. And um, I had this little hobby business. I had started teaching my own classes and I looked at that and I said, you know, well, what if I were to, you know, make this kind of my focus while I figure out, you know, what I want to do after the music business. And that's when I learned about franchising. And, uh, and so really now, you know, we're in over 40 cities across the country and launching in Mexico uh, later this spring. So that's, you know, the very short version of how I took, you know, creating choreography in my own bedroom through uh, to, you know, looking to exit a career that was not adding value to the world and decided that franchising was really the path to, uh, to, to really changing other people's lives and in the process, changing my own. That's a great story. Congratulations on the expansion. That's exciting. Yeah. Um, so, so you have a unique view based on that background, having worked in the music industry, which has some notorious issues sometimes, but, but what are the unique challenges and opportunities for women in franchising in your experience? You know, coming from the music business where I think women have a very unique challenge, um, you know, it's a very male dominated and very kind of traditional, uh, sort of gender role type of industry. Um, Franchising has so refreshingly not been that way. It, in my experience in the last seven years since I decided to turn this hobby into uh, to a franchise concept, uh, I have just found in terms of like the actual, uh, my peers, you know, other franchise founders, other franchise executives, there's so much generosity. There's so much, you know, there's no competition. There is, uh, everyone wants to better each other and everyone truly cares about relationships. I mean, franchising is truly a people business. Whether you have a, a, a hair cutting franchise concept, a child care concept, a senior care, a car washing, a power wash, whatever it is, it's truly, it really is a people business because you don't get into franchising if you don't care about people because your franchisees as a franchisor, they're my people. And so I will say that, you know, the ch I have not seen as many challenges face women in our industry as I did in the music industry. And that's been so refreshing. And, um, and I love contributing to that culture as well. Yeah. And does something ha is, is part of that, do you think, uh, have to do with the fact that um, you have the ownership? Absolutely. I mean, I think what's great about franchising is, you know, you're really empowering other people to start their own business, which means I'm not in competition with you. I We need each other. 
And that is what is franchising is so great. And even my peers, like I mentioned, the other women, my other, you know, I'm kind of in some cohort and, you know, women's groups with other franchise founders and franchise kind of C-level executives. And the culture, even in concepts that are, I don't have a lot of competitors in this space yet, but, you know, some of my, my franchising lady friends do, and they help each other. They share best practices. They want each other, they want to see each other succeed. And it's not fake. It is genuine, and it's it's just a really special thing to be part of. That's awesome. Well, so how do you, how do you define success in your world? You know, I thought about this a lot, and um, you know, success for me is really about my the lives that we change, and that's not just the clients that come to Diva Dance and they take a class and they leave feeling better than when they came in. It's my franchisees and what being a business owner does for their life. Uh, hopefully, it creates financial abundance, whatever that means to them, and freedom and flexibility. And when you have financial abundance and freedom and flexibility, the possibilities in your life are truly endless. You get to do more things that you love to do. You get to show up how you want to. You get to spend more time with your family. Uh, whatever it is that fills you up and is your purpose on the earth, uh, I think franchising can truly make that possible. Um, and so that is is really, to me, what, what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. So um, despite the fact that you think this is a great industry for women, I'm wondering if you have any advice for franchisers who are looking to support uh, women entrepreneurs, especially the younger ones. Well, we got to help people get access to capital. I mean, that is so critical. I can't tell you how many women I talk to that truly want to be part of Diva Dance and they want this, they want to leave a career that they is not fulfilling them and they want this to be, you know, what they do day to day and they just don't have access to capital or they don't understand money. And that is something that, you know, I see consistently, um, especially in you know certain communities where you know they don't they don't talk about money growing up, or they you know they don't haven't had access, they don't have generational wealth, they don't have access to mentorship, and that's something I'm really passionate about. Within the Diva Dance community, I have a mentorship program that folks who are instructors or on the staff of some of my local you know our franchisees, uh, our owners can nominate them to be part of a mentorship program that I lead. It's a six week cohort that I'm helping these folks understand and learn more about leadership. Leadership, and you know, hopefully, then they they feel more empowered and they have access to knowledge and influence that maybe they didn't have before. But I think we can help folks with mentorship, and I think absolutely access to capital and financial literacy, so that women can move confidently and they have the high mindset and a high skill set to be a great business owner. Awesome. Um, so, what advice? I'm going to flip that a little bit and ask, what advice do you have for women who are considering entering the industry or who are entering? I would just say, you know, put yourself out there. Uh, every woman I have ever approached in franchising, and, and men as well, frankly, because, you know, men men don't seem to be intimidated by women in our business. Um, they want to lift us up. You know, several of my most valued mentors in our business are men, and they just, they want to see us succeed. So, um, but when I say, you know, if there's a woman looking to get into franchising, either as a franchisee or as a franchisor or as a supplier in the franchising industry, you know, build those relationships. People are very generous with their time. They're their energy and uh, they're very, very generous with knowledge. And so I would just say, you know, don't be afraid to ask, put yourself out there. Um, some of the most amazing women in our business, um, you know, Shane Evans from Massage Heights, Shannon Wilburn from uh, Just Between Friends, uh, Kathy Dino from Painting with a Twist. These are all, um, you know, Anna Phillips from The Lash Lounge. These are all people who have personally given me their time to help me feel more confident in the industry. They've made introductions for me. They have answered my questions, no matter how, you know, seemingly silly I thought they were. And they've given me that, you know, kind of, uh, kind of add a girl, you know, as I, as I've grown. So I would say, you know, don't be afraid to build relationships. There's no like mean girls, you know, in the franchising industry that I've experienced. That's awesome. And mentorship is, is so important, you know, across sectors. So I think that's really good advice. Is there anything else you think that our audience should know? You know, I would just say I love franchising, you know, again, uh, being in the music business for so many years, which was so fun. You know, music, music business is so fun. I was having a hard time having a direct line to impact, you know, because music, even though it changes people's lives and it enhances people's lives and obviously live music experiences are very transformative. When you're working behind the scenes uh, in, in the music industry, it's a squiggly line to impact. And in franchising, in my experience, especially at Diva Dance and what we do, I have a direct line to impact. 
impact. Like I, I can see the efforts I put in has a, a, it moves the needle. It changes people's lives. It leaves them better than we found them. It uh, makes them happier. And when you're happier, you are, you know, you treat other drivers on the road better. You know, you, uh, you're nicer to your server at the restaurant. You're kinder to your family. Uh, and that's really what we're here to do. So I would just say to anyone listening, either, uh, you know, especially if you're looking to pursue franchising and you're looking to invest in a franchise, uh, make sure that there's a values alignment between you and the concept you're looking at. And uh, just know that, um, through franchising, you can truly have a direct line to uh, creating a legacy, creating financial abundance for yourself, and uh, having a business and a life that you love. That's awesome. Yeah, and working here at 1851 Franchise, we get to talk to so many people who are who are really making big change through, you know, a seemingly uh, old school business concept. So it's so great. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us. It's really good. Happy Women's History Month, and um, we hope to have you back again soon, Jamie. Thank you. And I'll, I'll look for that crown in the mail. Thank you. All right. We'll be sending it. <laughs> Thanks.